and are sitting at the Brady showing on the Joven property 7 kilometers east of the scatting deposit. And this is where it all began for McDonald Mines. The showing was a discovery by a prospector named John Brady. It was all covered, all the ground here was not exposed and the prospector using a bitmap was able to pick up the signature of the sulfide and a massive sulfide mineralization and was able to expose the showing after with an excavator. This is an illustration of the potential and also of the original potential that exists outside of the scatting deposit. The showing is a polymetallic high-grade cobalt, nickel, copper, silver and gold showing and the geology of it is quite comparable to what we can observe at the scatting deposit. The host truck sodic alteration. We see it here, we see it everywhere where we see the mineralization and that is comparable to what we are observing around the high-grade gold zone of the scattering deposit. The power line properties are located approximately four kilometers south of the uh, scattering deposit and it's expanding the original potential that we are observing at scatting. Our trenching program revealed the extent of the hydrothermal system that was surrounding all of the showing. And one of the key observations that we have made is all of the showing, similar to what we have seen at the Joven showing, or the Brady showing, and at the scatting mine site, all the showing are hosted within the zone of a sodic alteration within these rocks that we are calling albitites. Our work on the Powerline property also reveal a large zone of hydrothermal brecciation where we see the rocks, the albitites, being brecciated, infiltrated and mineralized by quartz, iron carbonates and pyrite that is carrying a low level of gold associated with cobalt and nickel, creating a broad anomalies in gold mineralization Looking at the attributes of these zones of gold mineralization that we have seen on the Powerline property, we could be sitting in the halo of the zone of chloride that are characteristic of the zone of high-grade gold mineralization that we are seeing at the scanning site. So we're located on one of the trenches we have done on the uh, Powerline property. And on this trench, what we can see is the uh, Bruce conglomerate, which is one of the sedimentary unit, part of the Euronian sequence, the sedimentary sequence that is hosting the hydrothermal system at which we are working on the scanning deposit but also regionally across the full property. We can see the nice conglomerate with different fragments in it and what is very interesting on that trench is as we're moving in this direction we can see the color of the conglomerate is progressively changing from this gray to a very bright white color and what this white color is indicating it's indicating the progressive transformation of the conglomerate into the rock that we call albitites. So we are, what we are seeing here is the process of the acidic alteration, taking our Bruce conglomerate and progressively transforming it into a rock that we can now call albitite or strongly altered albitized rock. And when we go down and we look at the channel samples that we have done on that trench, we can see the complete transformation of the rock where all the matrix is now transformed into albite. And also what we can see is a lot of uh, brown speckles. These brown speckles are little crystals of carbonates that are overprinting and crystallizing after the albitization. And a lot of this sodic alteration with carbonates that we are observing here on the power line properties, we can also observe that the chloride zone of the scattering deposit that are carrying high grade gold mineralization. The Villeneuve showing, located approximately 50 meters east of the Suez zone and approximately 500 meters east of SM1901, which is the first hole McDonald mine drill on the scattering property. This trench here is part of the stripping program that McDonald mine has started in October 2019 and has exposed a sizable zone of chloride alteration. It's comparable to the other zone of the scattering deposit, the chloride alteration is principally distributed along a north-south structures located at the center of the trench and chloride alteration is utilizing the bedding and the sedimentary rock 
to expand away from the north-south structure to form a sizable zone of chlorite alteration. The attributes of this new showing on the scattering property and in terms of chlorite alteration, the surrounding sodic alteration is the classical alteration associated with gold mineralization on the scattering property and has the potential to contain gold mineralization comparable to the horizon of the scattering deposit. On the salt crop, we are going to be looking at uh, some of the main factors that are controlling the geometry of the scanning deposit and the distribution of gold in the different zones of mineralization that we are observing through the deposit. We are also going to be observing some of the key features that are characteristic of the scanning deposit and the mineralization itself, but also of what is surrounding the mineralization and the zone of high-grade gold that we have been drilling in the scanning deposit. What we can see here is a variable zonation in the rock and changes in colors that are signaling the interaction of these rocks with water. One of the main features that we are observing is the rock turning to that pinkish white color. And what this pinkish white color is are the zones of sodic alterations that are a critical component of the scanning deposit. Sodic alteration is being formed when a lot of water with salt is circulating in the rock the salt is going to be reacting with the host rock and this is going to add sodium inside the rock which is going to form this sodic alteration reflected by a mineral that we call albite. As alteration is progressing, it's going to evolve to this green alteration that we see here which is a chloride alteration which is a direct host of gold mineralization inside the scanning deposit. When we look especially how these things are distributed, we see on this outcrop that the chlorite alteration is forming a regular front that is that has a north-south orientation and it's going to be forming zone of swelling and, and luckily it's going to be fingering and then it's going to form zone of swelling again and this is a characteristic features of the zones of mineralization that are present in the scanning deposit and in each of these zones whether it's the swelling or the zone of fingering high-grade mineralization can be present and show a special continuity between each of the different piece, pierce point or drilling intersection that we can obtain in these zones. Uh, now we're going to be moving to another outcrop where we're going to be seeing the next uh, stage of evolution or the higher level of complexity that is characteristic of some of the mineralized zone of the scanning deposit. Okay, now we're sitting on an outcrop where we see the uh, north salt oriented structure that is controlling the distribution of the chloride which is all the green material that we can see on the outcrop but also what this outcrop is exposing it ex it's exposing very well the higher level of complexity that it's characteristic of the mineralized zone of the scattering deposit the north south component that we see here is very important in order to bring the water that will form the chloride and bring the gold in the system but after, when this water is circulating along this north-south structure, some of the water and some of the fluids will come into the rock and will start expanding away from the north-south structures and form broad zone of uh, chlorite alteration that are going to be containing variable amount of gold. As we're getting away from the north-south structures, what we can see is that the level of chlorite, the, the, the uh, density of green on the outcrop, is not as high as when we are getting very close to the zone, the north-south oriented structure that is the primary control on the distribution of that chlorite alteration. This outcrop is also very interesting for another reason. Historically, some people or some of the historic workers have been doing very selective channel sampling on the outcrop. Even though the channel sampling is covering a little fraction of the outcrop, this channel sampling allowed us to understand that this zone of chloride alteration that we are observing carries up to 40 grams per ton gold in selective sampling. And now this is the zone that we will be calling the core shag zone, which has never been drilled before until uh, we uh, come on the property. We are now at the Magnolia Mine Core Shack and we're looking at typical drill hole intersection that were obtained in the scattering deposit. If we think about what we have seen on the outcrop, when we look at drill core, we see comparable relationship between the zone that surrounds the chloride zone and the zone of mineralization that we call the chloride zone. 
when we have a good chloride zone, what we typically see in the drill core, we will see the rock, initially pinkish white to white, turning into a dark green color. And within that rock that has a dark green color will be variably distributed sulfides. What a sulfide is, is a mineral that has sulfur in its structural formula. One of the most typical minerals we will see in this drill core is being called pyrite. Pyrite, which can be forming very big crystal, is an iron sulfide. It's a combination of iron and sulfur. This is forming the mineral we call pyrite. These pyrites are going to be variably distributed in the drill core and they can come in association with other sulfides, one of which we call calcopyrite. And calcopyrite is a copper sulfide. It's copper, iron, and sulfur, which is forming a copper sulfide. These indicators are suggesting that we are sitting in a good chloride zone, that is prospective for gold mineralization. The shoulders are gonna be the sodic alteration, the zone where the rock is gaining sodium, and in the center is the zone rich in iron, which are forming the chloride zone. A very strong iron alteration, which is coming with variably distributed sulfides. The iron sulfides and the copper sulfides. Combined together, these are positive indicators of gold mineralization, leading to some occasions where there will be visible gold in the rock. If we think again about other gold deposits that are existing, the scattering deposit differs from classical gold deposit with the respect that instead of having quartz vein that carries high-grade gold mineralization, in the case of the scanning deposit, high-grade gold mineralization is occurring inside these zone, these chloride zones, which are dark green. But the comparison is the same. If we see a broad intersection of this dark green material, this is comparable in Timmins or in other gold camp to get a broad intersection rich in quartz vein that are carrying gold.